A huge thanks to BetterHelp for sponsoring today's video. BetterHelp is the world's largest therapy service, and it's 100% online. Sometimes taking steps toward mental health can feel daunting, but BetterHelp makes it easy. You just answer a few questions about your needs and preferences in therapy, and BetterHelp matches you with the right therapist from their network of over 30,000 licensed and experienced therapists. You can talk to your therapist however you feel comfortable, whether it's via text, chat, phone, or video call. Message your therapist at any time and schedule live sessions when it's convenient for you. Get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash cinemasins. The link is in the description. The MCU. Wait, are we to the point where that's a sin now? Has the universe shifted on its axis and Marvel has lost the goodwill earned by a decade of hits? <clears throat> the f***ing MCU. Oh sure, this creature evolved the sturdy, strong body of a horse, but kept the soft, vulnerable head of a snail so that when it runs, anything that hits its face kills it instantly. I am highly doubtful that even space evolution would give us horse cargo. What is this place? It's the place where you crash landed, right next to our main protagonist's mom. We call it the Valley of Multiversal Convenience. My life doesn't really make sense. Hard agree. So I guess we're done here? We can add a few hundred sins and head home? No? Well, I'm adding 10 anyway, just for making me do the work the movie already admits is done. It's been a crazy hey few years hey, for everyone. I believe you mean half of everyone. For the other half, it's been less crazy and more, wait a second, you married my brother while I was gone? Remember the people who got you here. This movie is racing through a montage that I'm not even sure matters at all to the film I'm about to watch. Sometimes you just get lucky. Sure, sometimes, yeah. Unless you're in the MCU where luck is basically oxygen at this point. Reforestation, affordable housing, food production. She's not wasting a second. Wait, she solved all those problems? Honestly, using pin particles to get up to the top of the Golden Gate Bridge with your Chinese takeout is the epitome of entitlement. This is worse than Iron Man chilling and eating inside the famous donut from Randy's Donuts. Be f***ing entitled pricks. Does any of this track? Has the Scott Lang we've ever been shown displayed any kind of the self-love it takes to write a f***ing memoir? Has he demonstrated any love for puns to date? I love you, Cassie. Thanks for being my hero. And so ends three full minutes of expositional narration disguised as a book reading. But that's a terrible final paragraph. Why are you talking about Hope having her dad's company back in the emotional close to your book? Hi, Hope. Hey, Dad. I would have a lot more respect for this Scott's daughter as also a criminal storyline if, you know, the movie was actually about that. But instead, it's all about setting up the Kang dude, which... Like, how many nights did poor Peyton Reed go home to his family sobbing about having to make the third Ant-Man movie a Kang movie? You shrank a cop car? I know, right? Seems like the danger and extreme nature of that action might result in something more than a have your parents come pick you up consequence. Dang. Where do they expect him to go? It's not their fault that they lost their homes in the blip. Movie raises really interesting question about the blip and its impact on housing that neither this movie nor any after has any interest in exploring. Dad. A guy dressed like a bee tried to kill me in my room when I was six. That is true, but it's weird you'd use that as evidence that you should be free from all monitoring. All right. I have so many questions about this dumb pizza. Where did you get the tiny toppings? Why are there more zucchini on the big pizza than the small one? Why didn't you cut it before making it bigger? And mostly, if this is possible, why aren't you using this technology to feed the homeless? Jesus did the same shit with bread and fish and people still won't shut up about it 2,000 years later. Let's just show him. This movie is racing through these opening on Earth scenes because it cannot wait to get to the quantum verse, which is really colorful and fake looking and has a can. Are you doing this? Actually, no. They built their own tech. Allowing insects to develop super intelligence. Do you want to be ruled by ants? Because this is how you get ruled by ants. Cassie's just been curious and we, we gave her some pointers. And we didn't want to bother you with it because we're just messing around with the fabric of time and space. Honestly, what's the worst that could happen? You know, if I had something like this when you were gone, then I could have found you. Rubbing it in that you didn't care enough about your dad to show your genius when he really needed you. How does it work? It's kind of like that two-way radio we used to have. You send a signal down from here, and then it collects the data and it sends it back. That's not at all how a two-way radio works. It's two distinct one-way paths controlled by two distinct parties sending information. I think you just wanted to trigger Catwoman with the whole two-way thing so she could have a realization she probably should have had five minutes ago and Cass called it a satellite to the ocean. There's something I should have told you. You mean would, Janet. There's something you would have told them had this been a real world where people make normal decisions about sharing world-ending information with people they love. A lot of something happens, and then some more other things happen, and all of it looks like mediocre CGI, which is kind of a good way to describe this whole movie beyond just the scene. Why is he falling faster than Cassie is? Why is there air down here but gravity is all wonky? I guess the answer, as it will be to all my questions in this movie, is because Quantum Realm. We should be dead. Fair point. 
Having scanning tech that can be fooled by, checks notes, standing against something. Remember how the Ant-Man movies were fun because you got to see humans at gigantic and tiny proportions as relative to recognizable objects? This movie was like, how about we put our heroes in an environment for the entire movie with only things that the audience will have no relative size understanding of, so their powers are completely indistinguishable as interesting or entertaining. I don't think this is a shot! Gender reveal parties. Look, I'm just gonna be honest. When you put characters in an environment where literally anything can happen, like angry sun monsters and underground purple whale moles, the stakes of the whole thing go right out the window. Honestly, you could fucking kill Ant-Man in this movie, and as long as it happens here in the quantum realm, I will probably laugh if I have any emotions at all. It just doesn't matter. It's never been less real in the MCU. Keep your voice down. None of them, including Janet, will do this at any point in the entirety of the rest of this scene. We don't have time to talk. Henry. Actually, you super do. You just spend all that time talking about how you don't have time to talk, and they need to trust you, and they need to shoosh. It's pretty annoying, actually. I told you to stay away from here. But you never told them why, and that's crucial. People will always be curious about the things they were warned against without explanation. That's how I got into porn, drugs, and Barry Manilow. In the midst of this speech by Hank about not knowing about any of this stuff, he lets an unknown entity land in his hand like he's auditioning to be in the next Alien movie. There are worlds here. Worlds within worlds. Wow, that doesn't make sense. It sure seems like you are now explaining the quantum realm. Something you just argued for the right to not have to do. Drink the ooze! I'm not gonna tell you why for some reason, so guzzle guzzle pops. If this movie had been a standalone Disney film named something bland, like say, John Carter, it would have made way less money and faced way more criticism. But because of the MCU machine, this is still a profitable film that made half a billion dollars. Now these two fight without giving Hank or Hope any indication that this is play. Is this just the section of the movie where loved ones hold information from each other to create suspense for a movie audience they should know nothing about? Friendly. Any system where you have to walk directly up to the face of a giant creature and touch it to determine if it's friendly or not, it's not a good system. Where exactly are we going on this? We're not too far from an old friend of mine. Will someone in this movie just answer a direct question with a direct answer? Waterboarding with cranberry juice. You'll still give up all your secrets, but your urinary tract will be super healthy. His name is Scott Lang? He has seven holes. First, the do you know how many holes he has by reading his mind? And second, seven? I assume you mean ears, nostrils, mouth, butt, and But what about the eyes? If you don't count the eye cavities, are you also not counting the tear ducts? Those seem at least close to the same size as the urethra, right? Also, isn't the nose really one hole with a skin flap dividing the entry? And doesn't your mouth have two holes, one for breathing and one for eating? Not to mention on a smaller level, every pore is a hole. Well, the answer is probably between five and five million, depending on your definition of the word hole. The lack of due diligence here is honestly infuriating. Okay, they're telling the truth. Thinking that reading minds is the same thing as being a lie detector. So they're hanging on to this flying manta ray by rains and the prayers of a thousand nuns, right? How did they not fall off this shit as it dive bombs? Hey Merv, what if it was like Pandora crossed with Corson? Brilliant! Holy sh**. That guy looks like broccoli. Appearance shaming. Keep your head down. None of them, including Janet, will do this at any point in the entirety of the rest of this scene. Drink those. I'll be right back. For f**k's sake, how hard is it to add an it's a language translation juice to that sentence? Just because you foreshadow the ants communicating to Hank for the big reveal later doesn't mean I'm not sitting how forced it feels. You want Chekhov's ants because that's how you- Okay, fine, I'll stop. I'll never stop. I thought you were dead. I guess the movie is going to do that Thor Ragnarok Jeff Goldblum thing where it earns free points because of the mega-ness of the cameo, but I will not be bought! At least you still have a home. Wait. What is that I'm sensing here? Is that, is that the beginnings of a story? Human, like us. Human, that's the word. You forgot a word that you never had to learn because the ooze just translated it directly to your brain? I feel like this movie stopped caring about 15 minutes before the Marvel logo appeared. So what is it that brings you to us, Janet? She just said, she literally just said. We're looking for friends of ours, two of them, human, like us. Let them go, he just wants me. If Janet really cared about Hope and Hank, why are they even here for this meeting? You could have come alone, you know. A mechanized organism designed only for killing? He said that like I'm supposed to orgasm now. Should I orgasm now? Nice shot! 
But why didn't it embiggen the glass or the liquid molecules? Does it have a comeuppance setting we don't know about? I'm gonna hotwire this thing. Giving serious thought to letting chat GPT finish this sin script. That guy? I was down here for 30 years, Henry. Excusing infidelity due to extenuating circumstances. At least Helen Hunt thought Tom Hanks was long dead before she started doing the horizontal tender. This entire battle would be weapons we don't understand, doing amounts of damage we are unsure about, edited with cuts too quick to comprehend, and mostly darkness to hide the CG. Movies! <laughs> If he has that weapon, why does he do so much punching? Scott will grow large to block this ship and then immediately shrink to knock Cassie out of the way in hopes that the ship will roll over them. Why not just stay big and grab her like he did earlier? Look, momentum, right? Jump, tap, right? A special thanks to the melee around them for ignoring these two so they can have some mid-battle lessons. Really sweet of you all. This battle is 64% Scott and Cass running with their helmets off instead of flying with their helmets on like a sane person who actually realizes they are in a super suit. Is someone in there? This reveal of Modoc being the dude from the first Ant-Man movie that did the yellow jacket suit? Ugh. I'm exhausted even trying to explain it to you. But also, did this movie really need a Modoc? Because I don't think it even a little bit did. Our fates have always been forged together. Ever since that day we met. Apparently Modoc actually stands for montage of Darren's positional origin story. Um, narration. Darren is dead! There is only Modoc! This is fun. I'm having fun. I'm a random film goer and this is very fun. You left Darren to die in the quantum realm. You deserved it. But the Conqueror found me, rebuilt me. You didn't deserve it. Mechanized organism designed only for killing. Actually, that's Modofk. Scott Lang would be excellent at the acronym SIN School House of Literalistic Explanations. The multiverse, as in alternate dimensions. No, the multiverse as in, why the f should I care about any of this anymore when I now know none of it really matters because I guess Reed Richards can be Jim from The Office and then just get annihilated as if I'm supposed to feel something about that, that multiverse. We tried everything to recharge his ship's energy core. Everything? Did you try reading at some withering heights while dancing Michael Flatley's Lord of the Dance? Did you try tickling it with a feather while eating a bowl of Cheerios soaked in orange juice? Did you try reverse psychology? Maybe slow your roll with the absolutes then, Janet. It took ages, but we did it. We brought it back to life. We won't be getting into any of the specifics about how we did it, though, for obvious reasons. His ship was neurokinetic, connected to his thoughts. When I touched it, I saw his mind. Well, that just seems like a design flaw, then. I'd check the warranty, and maybe search online to see if there's been a recall. This mid-movie exposition will go on for a total of almost 10 minutes. This movie is so talky. So Janet is about to turn into Aunt Granny and will ultimately blow up the core of Kang's ship. But she said they tried everything to reignite the ship's core during their years of attempts. And I don't know that I believe she would have kept her ant suit thing a secret when she could maybe have used the tech to fix the core. It's a nice surprise for Kang, but she trusted him pretty fully right up until now. And I think she'd have revealed her PIM tech in case it could have helped fix the ship. Why do you think you could stop me? Because somebody else already did, and she will. And then other people will stop you again later in this movie. For a big bad, you are actually quite stoppable. He's got weapons and technology centuries beyond anything we can dream of. Not dreaming hard enough. I spent years fighting him, running from him, hiding from him. It's almost like there's a whole movie's worth of backstory being thrown at us all at once. I'm so sorry you had to go through all of that alone, but you are- Giant scoop! He's after the core. How is that possible? And why? He's all powerful and you said you blew up the core. Suddenly the core still exists and he can't get to it unless he gets tiny? Are you fucking serious? Olaf tells me you're a good thief. Movie reminds me that this franchise used to be about fun heist romps instead of overworked and clunky cinematic universe setups. You know Janet too? Does everyone down here know Janet? Seriously, this place is supposed to contain worlds within worlds, but everyone is so familiar with everyone else it feels more like Mayberry. Because I know how it ends. He does not. I'll do it, just let her go! Why does Kang need Scott to go get the engine core? Or are the pin particles in the suits themselves and he can't extract them for his own use? Are the ant people not carrying spares in the suits? Why does slapping the pin particle thing back in the Bill Murray scene enlarge the squid when humans need an ant person suit to be able to shrink or enlarge? Well, I don't need to fully understand the pin technology, I just need to know the fucking rules. Kang and Lang overlook the multiversal engine core at the exact same time as Hope and the parentals show up there after their journey because of course they do. Once you're inside, find the core and size it back down. Again, I thought the core had been exploded. Is he supposed to take 10,000 pieces of exploded core and put them all back together? What does it look like? When I steal something, I usually know what I'm stealing. You'll know it when you see it. You'll know it when you see it needs to seriously die already. It's something 
only set in movies, and I fucking hate it. Just tell him what it fucking looks like, which in this case I think would be a thousand pieces of blown up orb captured inside of some giant red gems that are here for some reason. The longer you're in there, the more your mind will come undone. Why? And now for the part of the movie that's just an excuse for the animators to design cool digital screensaver art. And by part, I mean whole movie. Why am I looking at another me? Because it wasn't enough that every Spider-Man has to do the pointing meme, but now the Ant-Men have to do it too? It's a probability storm. This movie read Hitchhiker's Guide once and too speedily and then got creative. Every choice you could make existing all at once. If that were really the case, then there would be so many Scots appearing instantly here that they would all fuse into some monstrous Franken-Scott with millions of eyes and mouths, then this movie should really read its own screenplay. Whoa, what guys, hey, relax. How the f*** is one of the probability he's wearing Baskin Robbins stuff. How is that even a possibility of this branching decision tree? Is this movie even trying anymore? I've got a read on Scott. <laughs> First of all, I forgot you guys were in this f***ing movie. Second of all, how do you have a read on Scott? He's in a magic cloud of multiplying dust inside a sphere inside a crystal. How are you able to do that? He's going to say love, isn't he? We all want the same thing, and I'm coming, Cassie. Close enough. This semi-turgid expanding mass of Lang. Motherfucker mastering the flying of this ship to do this is too big an ask! This is my old mentor. Hank. Darren? Movie attempts to give Hank and Modoc something to do while the other main characters do other stuff elsewhere. And then all the side characters we haven't seen in forever are probably doing stuff that will come back into play as soon as can we just get to the end punchy punchy stuff and be done? Walking from the front, walking from behind, walking from the side. Excite I saw the multiverse. And it was dying. From your lips to Feige's ears, Kang. How the f*** does she have a bunch of PIM discs available to her? Are Kang's blue cloud soldiers incapable of basic searches? Again, are the suit-based PIM particles unlimited? This sh deserves answers! Apparently they pass through some sort of time dilation. They live thousands of years in a single day. Apparently? Apparently? How do you gloss over all the explanation with the word apparently? We've got some ideas. Did the ooze wear off? Why can't they hear the ants in English like every other creature? How good a force field prison do you really have if a single faceless drone guard's cloud face can unlock the cells? And the dynasty of kings. Is this working? Yes, Cassie, this indeed f***ing works. But the family I've lost taught me to keep fighting. Does she know for sure that this speech is going on to the entire quantum realm? Because if she did, wouldn't she make a better speech? This movie really does think you're gonna lose your mind for some fancy ring action, huh? Even Middle Earth is disgusted by how much this movie is focusing on rings. Your dad's not here, Cass. But I guess that's not a big surprise. How the f*** does freaking Modoc know how much Scott has been around? He's been trapped down here, right? The word is our bond! Without that, we're nothing! Scott Lang is suddenly a huge verbal contract enthusiast. There's so many! Scott! I can't hold on! They use act on Kirkana cliche. They came. Way to go, Cassie! So this is the ending from A Bug's Life, where the little people outnumber the bad people so much that they, they were ants even in that movie. Ants! True to MCU form, here are 10 seconds of relatively colorful what the f***isms. There are colors, things explode, I guess I should be grateful. What is the bridge code? Talk to I first. 18147. The bridge code is five f***ing numbers. Are you kidding me? I have holes. I'd love to take a sin off for this, but this discount Guardians of the Galaxy crew has been in like 15 total minutes of the movie, so the hole just isn't greater than the sum of its parts. If he can be this big and this powerful for this long, why is he just doing this now? <laughs> the MCU is now just literally repurposing its own greatest hits so much that I half expect Cass to call him a puny god after this bit. You're huge! I'm we have literally zero visual context to know that this is true. They might as well just be running towards each other on a normal platform. Everything interesting about this franchise has been removed from this entry. Did Bob Barker direct this? Because they absolutely neutered this puppy. So he's supposed to be all powerful, and maybe he is, but he only ever mostly uses this blue laser thing from his hands. And while that looks deadly, it gets a bit boring after a while. <laughs> this asshole. <laughs> Oh no, not Plasma Cannon, head guy, please not him, how will I ever recover, it hurts so much. So the ant people are alternately going small and then large as they attack Kang, and it's certainly an awesome sight to anyone who gets to view the uncut original footage, because this sh is cut to Hades and beyond and back and then back to beyond Hades and then back again. 
There is nothing in the entirety of this film that tells me why these super smart ants would be any more effective against Kang than the other waves of faceless enemies he has already mowed down with ease. My name is Darren, and I am not a dick! Darren's ex dickina I think I can give us one shot back. No time to explain how I accomplished something in three minutes that I couldn't accomplish for 30 years or that Kang didn't figure out, but trust me, I read it in the script. We've got a shot. Oh no, the Ant-Man mask is broken. It does things that I'm unaware of, but are surely important. My favorite part about the punching part is that it means we're probably about 10 minutes from the ending part. Scott sucks at boxing. Guess maybe this would be a fair fight if Kang hadn't just spent months training in boxing to play the bad guy in Creed 3. Accidentally aiming your way into beating the big bad. This is actually a really interesting and meaningful conclusion. They had to sacrifice seeing everyone they love to be trapped in the quantum realm so that others could live. I'll just start a clock on how long before the MCU will make it completely meaningless by saving them anyway. Well, that's gotta be a new record. What did I do? You know what? It's probably fine. Being honest about how little any of this actually matters. Movie does not contain a Luis. <laughs> Comic Con. Now you're in the sunken place. Mm, no, Venti is 20. Danny. Yeah. Large is large. In fact, tall is large, and grande is Spanish for large. Venti's the only one that doesn't mean large. It's also the only one that's Italian. Congratulations, you're stupid in three languages. And then they realized they were no longer little girls. They were little women. I just think you should get to have a normal life. Can't be normal. If I'm normal, I'm boring. Do not. Move. Suspicion is based on movement. Now this is pod racing. Janet Van Dyne? Phil? Phil? Phil Connors? I thought that was you. And no one knows this place better than Janet. Janet. What happened to you? We fought against him. I have been stabbed, shot, poisoned, frozen, hung, electrocuted, and burned. Just let me take you home. And then? Win. Um, um... He's got weapons and technology centuries beyond anything we can dream of. I don't know. I can imagine quite a bit. I'm not another me. You're another me. Not me, you idiot. Him! 